Hello. Um, I've not been on for a while, but whilst I'm on today, um, I've been having some difficulties with the wire speed and the, the quality of the wells from this little MIG. Um, as you can see, it's a Clark MIG 135TE turbo, no less. Um, a good little welder for what I need it for. It's uh, it's just on a little stand there in the garage, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's running on gas. So as you know, I've said it before, I'm running on this hobby well gas. But I just thought I'd show you the different uh, the different settings um, on on Gracie. Um, I've been using it on the settings one, um, and I have been on between minimum and maximum on one. Uh, this is just a normal MIG welder. You can get an inverter one where you can alter the uh, alter the power and etc. A little bit better than this. This is just stepped. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. I'm just talking about this welder for now. So I've been using it between one minimum and one maximum um, for the steel on the uh, when I've been repairing Gracie, and I've also been playing with the the wire speed. I've had it down to four and a half um, at some points and then back up to seven in other, you know, where the, the steel is a little bit better. But I just thought I'd, uh, I'd just show you what, um, what it looks like. So these are some offcuts that I've got, as you can tell. Um, it's 19 gauge steel, which is just over one mil in, uh, in thickness. Um, so what I did, I set the uh, I set the welder up one maximum um, on this particular set, and then I played about with the um, with the wire speed. So I went from eight all the way down to one, uh, just to sh just to show, give you an idea of what kind of penetration and what your weld will look like from one upwards. Um, so I'm hoping it will come out okay on this. So. Obviously these are my settings, so on the machine, one max, so power one and on maximum. Um, and then I did eight little wells. So starting number one, as you can tell, very, very slow wire speed. No real, um, no real wells as such. And then we progressed up, so like I say, my welding is not the best, but it's just to show you the settings on the... So you can see what they were like. I've even missed the line on that. Um, so yeah, four is beginning to to pool a little bit. And then you've got five and six, seven and eight. Um, just ignore that for now. So the, the, the eight settings, although it goes up to 10, um, I only did it to eight um, for various reasons. And if you just look at the height of the, of the wells, you can see how high... Uh, number eight is and number seven and then six and five drop down and then f for some reason four and number one stand up so they're not getting the wells seem to be just sitting on top of the uh, on top of the steel and then the telling bit is the uh, the penetration so if we have this as number eight so number eight there you can see there's very it does come through somewhat um, seven likewise but then you see six which is this one here six and five we've got very good penetration and then it tails off again so five four three two and one so there's if I can zoom in yeah so you can see there's very little move my finger it might help very little penetration on four three two and one but five and six um, almost look like a, a weld in themselves so if we turn them over and look at five and six so again five and six look quite good welds um, whilst I was doing this I've got my uh, gas set at uh, I think it's about 20 litres per minute so that's right in the middle of the MIG setting on this uh, on this regulator so 20 litres per second that's the um, the setting on the gas so we've got 20 litres per second and then at um, wire speed 
five and six we have quite good penetration so what I did then was I chose number five and I ran a weld along um, and this again is just to show you the difference in the uh, the difference in the welding so this five dirty so I didn't clean the metal which I know you should always do it but I didn't clean the metal in this in this respect and you can see how it's been jumping around and you know we've got a lot of spatter and one thing or another and we've left holes in the weld there and there um, and let me turn that over but again you can see the back side we've got penetration all the way through again it, it although when you look at them you do have gaps between the welds but that's just my welding but the penetration comes all the way through so what I did then was keeping the uh, keeping the gas at the same setting I upped the um, the wire speed to six again kept it at one and maximum and I did another weld but this time I cleaned the metal before I uh, before I did any welding um, and you can see on the the um, the weld has gone through so it's a, a half decent weld and then you turn it over in fact sorry I'm showing you the wrong side this is actually the uh, this is actually my weld on this side and that's the that's the back side so that's the, the penetration my apologies for that yeah so as, as you can see we've got really really good penetration and it almost looks as though it's a weld on that side whereas in fact, that was the weld that I ran through so that's just a, a, a quick overview of the difference in your wells and the difference that the uh, the settings can make as, and as you can see you know they vary widely from little lumps so to a quite decent weld and then you've got all the uh, you've got all the wire piling up if you go to uh, to eight and further on the because the wire speed's coming out that fast it's it's just hitting the metal and sitting on top where you've got to get it to a fine art a fine art got to get it to a fine setting so it will uh, it will not only hit the metal it will pull and it will fuse the two the two metal pieces together giving you a, a decent weld but that's like i said this is just me on this uh, um, 19 gauge metal it changes somewhat and i'll just show you this a little bit um so i'm on the back on the back panel at the moment this is all going to come out um because it it's it's just too flimsy um the uh, the rust has gotten hold of it somewhat so it's it's very uh, as you can see it's very thin but i did try to uh, i did try to weld a little patch panel in and using the same settings so using um one maximum and number five um, wire speed I did this but look how it stands up on this so you can you know you can see the, the, the weld is good you know there's there's nothing wrong with the weld but the 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 way the the way the wire has stood up on the um, on the weld so again you've just got to play with it as I said this is coming out so there was there was a hole there I just thought I'd patch it um but yeah so we need to um we need to work with our wire speed and the power of the uh, the power of the mig each time that we come to do a weld and i would just suggest just doing a practice weld and then taking it from there because that weld onto what the old metal has just stood up whereas on the uh, on the the test piece that i had on the bench um, which was both the same thickness it sat down nice and uh, nice and bonny. So, yeah, that's it. It's just interesting. You've just got to play. You can't just think, oh, I'll um, I'll do um, the same settings all the way through. And as I say, I'm not an expert by any uh, any stretch of the imagination. It's just what I've noticed as I've uh, as I've carried on. So I just thought I'd show people, um, firstly, the benefit of cleaning your um, cleaning your joint making sure it's clean your weld sits down so that that weld there will take very little um, very little cleaning compared to um, 
my normal welding or the welding if you look at maximum eight um how how high up that that well sits compared to the turn it over compared to the weld on there so there's there's you know if you're doing an awful lot of welding there's an awful lot of time to be saved in doing it correctly you know and getting your welds right so yeah so that's where i'm up to at the moment so as i've just said uh, with gracie i'm just on with the back panel um i'm just going to work my way across across the back the back i probably will take that panel out um the hatch uh, the uh, the boot lid piece here it's it's rotten underneath um and it it yeah i'm going to replace it i think um but i'm only going to replace the floor i think i'm going to try and keep the original uh, the original panel here you can buy this and you can buy the floor but i think it cuts about there and then You've got a weld all the way along along the inside there, so um, I'm just going to cut it out and put some nice fresh steel in there. Uh, yeah, so I also found some uh, some proper DIY um, that was under there, as you can you can see right through where it's uh, where it's rotten. So I've uh, I've split that panel. I'm going to do the same, do the spot welds along there, and then I'm going to put that one in. So that's uh, that's this evening's and tomorrow's job, I think. I'll do that, and then you'll be glad to know. Oh God, back on this side, um, another wheel arch. So uh, I've not even looked at it properly over here, so, but yeah, you can see how uh, how rotten it is. You know, this one, this side's even worse. Um, uh, obviously, with it being a UK car, this side runs along next to the kerb, so all the snow and muck and crap that's thrown up from the uh, from the roads all washes into the kerb and it gets thrown up on this side. So that's probably why this side is uh, is even worse. But uh, yeah, we'll get there. All good fun. So yeah, that's where we're up to. Um, okay. Right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.